Okay, so this project is going to have a database where we're going to store information. The user is going to save a list of classes that they've either taken or will take. This can obviously save any data, but my concept is it's going to be like a class tracking aspect of the app. Not only will the app say a list of classes and directions to campus and that kind of thing, there'll be the ability for the user to save classes, like a class schedule. This will be in a database. We've touched a little bit about uh, permanent storage via local storage, the HTML5 object of local storage. That's where we're saving the user's um, username if they choose to customize the app. Um, local storage is very cool, very powerful, uh, but it's not really a database. It's like a super cookie in that it can save data, I think up to five megabytes or so, uh, and then retrieve it at will and such. But we're going to need a database. A classic database has the ability to, for you to save many records, many fields. Um, quick show of hands, how many of you have any experience in any database software before? few people, okay. How many of you have experience then in uh, Oracle databases? Okay, any experience in uh, MySQL databases? People, okay, any experience in SQL itself, SQL, okay. Any experience in FoxPro? Oh, that's always the trick question. So um, we're going to use a, a database uh, eventually called PouchDB. We can look that up, pouchdb.com. Now, PouchDB is a style of the newer databases. It's a NoSQL style database. The thing about it is that these NoSQL databases are often self-contained. The big thing that you need about a classic database, SQL, MySQL, Oracle, they run on a server, don't they? And you usually have some middleware to interact with it. PHP is very common. You know PHP so that your HTML can interface with the database, MySQL. MySQL doesn't interact directly with your HTML. You have the middleman of PHP. So you have all that overhead. You need a server, you need MySQL installed, you need then to know how PHP works to be able to connect your, or to communicate your HTML to MySQL. Well, we don't always have that, or we don't want to learn a complete new thing, PHP. So there are many um, non-relational non -relational uh, no SQL database solutions out there that don't require server and that overhead. PouchDB is one of them. So the way that Pouch works is using JSON, J-S-O-N. Let's go ahead and open up the web browser and let's go to json.org, J-S-O-N.org. Kind of a simple, no-nonsense website, but it's going to tell us exactly what we need. JSON.org. That's JavaScript Object Notation. JSON is a cross-platform syntax, basically. It's a standard that's been rapidly adopted all over the web. Uh, it's a way to package, describe, and retrieve data. Um, it allows you to save data, retrieve data, edit data, delete data. That sounds like a database. With any classic database, Oracle, MySQL, etc., you store data, you retrieve the data, you edit the data, you delete the data. Well, you may be a pro in Oracle, but then you can't get any job locally. No one's using Oracle. Let's say you uh, know MySQL, but the particular company that's hiring know, wants someone that knows Oracle. So it's kind of incompatible in that sense. You have to learn each one. JSON, JavaScript Object Notation, is a lightweight data interchange format. It's easy for humans to read and write. It's easy for machines to parse and generate. It's based on a subset of JavaScript. Uh, standard blah 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 blah. JSON is a text format that is completely language independent but uses conventions that are s familiar to programmers of the C family like C, C++, Java, JavaScript, Python, etc. These properties make JSON an ideal data interchange language. So JSON is not a database. It's a syntax. It's a way of describing data. It's a way of storing, retrieving data. And I bring this to you because everyone uses JSON format nowadays. If I'm going to make the next great American Twitter app, 
uh, to interface with the Twitter data stream, they're going to kick the data back to you in JSON format. If you're going to tap into, you know, the Facebook API to make a Facebook app that taps into their data, they're going to give it to you in JSON format. So we're going to spend today talking about JSON format, doing an example practice that's going to then give us a foundation so that then we can understand how does PouchDB work. Once we know that, then we can start to add the database to our project. So JSON is built on two structures, a collective name, a collection of name and value pairs. In various languages, this is a this is realized as an object or a record or a struct or dictionary hash table, whatever that language calls it, or an associative array. Key value pairs. Username equals John. Username equals Bill. Age equals 12. Age equals 17. There's a key uh, or a name and a value. An ordered list of values. In most languages, this is realized as an array, a vector, a list, or a sequence. So we're grouping data together. This is that. Last name is that, and a bunch of last names. It's, uh, it's in an ordered list of values. Um, that sounds like an array. We can uh, retrieve elements from the JSON, the JavaScript object, um, relatively easy. And because we have some experience in the class so far with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, this is not a completely brand new alien thing. We just need to learn the, the, the structure of it, then we can use it. These are universal data structures. Uh, okay, JSON, they take this form. An object is an unordered set of name and value pairs. I often say key value pairs. Um, so that's name and value, key and value. An object begins with the left bracket, ends with the right bracket or brace. Each name is followed by a colon, and then the value pairs are separated by commas. The schematic here says JSON format is basically curly brackets. You're enclosing your data in curly brackets. We've kind of seen something like that before when we define a function. We got function, save name, curly brackets, and in between the curly brackets are all of our steps. Here, there's no prefix or anything, it's just open curly brace, close curly brace, that's JSON. So we have some string colon value. So some name or some key that describes the particular value. Last name, colon, Smith, comma. First name, colon, uh, John, comma. Uh, date of birth, colon, January 1st, comma. So it's just name and value pairs separated by commas. It's just basically serialized data, but it's bundled together as an object. Um, JSON, uh, JavaScript understands it as an object. Then we can retrieve the data, update the data, etc. Um, arrays are very often commonly used here to store the data more complexly because you might say, well, this sounds like a flat database. And it is, in that there isn't uh, the aspects of a relational database. You often have, you know, one set of data, one table related to another set of data, another table. That's a relational database. We don't have that in this format. It's very flat, it's basic, but we have arrays where we can store deeper data structures. In an array, we've seen these before, it's simply square brackets, value, comma, value, comma, value, and all of them have an index, 0, 1, 2, infinity. So this is an ordered collection of values, begins with the square brackets, values are separated with commas, except for the final value. The value that we're talking about can, uh, can be a string in double quotes, a number, no quotes, true or false, or null, no quotes, or an object, or an array. So when I said we have last name, colon, Smith, it's very simple data saved. When we had age colon seven, okay, simple data. But that value itself can be uh, an array, you know, a list of 50 values, 
So if I have a string name, uh, a string uh, string name, participants colon square brackets and a list of all the forty people participating in the debate, that's valid. We can have also objects in the object. So we have at the left here uh, user one colon curly brackets and then all of the uh, last name, first name, age, and so forth for that user. Comma, user2, colon, curly braces, defining the next user. So all of this data, and we'll do it in a moment for it to make sense, stored in a simple universal format that every modern website uses nowadays. Uh, it goes on to say that some of these need special encoding and so forth. We'll get to that eventually. And then if you're going to do numbers, so this really advanced schematic to write a number. Is it positive or negative? Do you have trailing zeros? Is it a digit and a dot and exponents and all that? Numbers. You can write numbers in it. And then you can go off and uh, see more. White space can be inserted between any pair of tokens, excepting a few encoded details that completely describes the language. So then you can go off to all of these resources to further learn, well, how does JSON work in Ruby? How does JSON work in uh, Lua? And of course, JSON in JavaScript. We're going to do, hands, we're going to do this hands-on in, in just a moment. So it's kind of 10,000 feet look at it at the moment. It's just a way to, say, to describe data. We'll do it in just a moment. Any questions, general questions at this point? It'll make more sense, hopefully if we do it. So um, go ahead and open Notepad++ and what we're going to do is do a little practice with a very very basic HTML project. Remember this several weeks ago when we were creating a 10-line HTML file? We're going to do that again. Uh, so right here let's just set up our, our quick um, sample HTML file. Remember this, in about 10 lines we can describe a very basic HTML file. If you had saved this sort of template somewhere, you might want to uh, bring it up, or if not, you, this is what you need to create. We just need something here to work with. I'm going to add in script. This is mostly going to be in JavaScript, so eventually we're going to get to this JavaScript stuff. So now it's sort of like our basic template for a a um, JavaScript project is that. Let me save my file here so I can save it with the proper encoding and I'll zoom back in. I'll just save this as JSON practice .html. Let's put that together. 16 lines. And then on top of this we'll practice with JSON. Okay, so JavaScript object notation. We are going to create an object um, using the standard JavaScript syntax, which should look very familiar. And then we're going to see about retrieving data, saving the data, and all of that. So um, I'm going to say here, line 13. I'm going to create a variable 
We've been seeing that variables in JavaScript are very powerful. They can hold just about anything. Uh, and let's say we're going to save this as superhero. We're going to define a superhero. This is an object. We can use the constructs the constructs of JavaScript to define an object, in this case, superhero, equal curly braces. Anything in the curly braces like this is basically JSON with a few more bits of syntax. Oftentimes, for readability, I would break this into a couple of lines. So I will move these curly braces to their own line, something like that. A JSON structure is that you have uh, something, colon, something. We have the name or the key on the left of the colon, and then on the right, well, what are we storing? And the syntax, the structure is, it's got to be in double quotes. So most of the time in this, these classes, we've been using double quotes everywhere inside of HTML and, and JavaScript. Uh, single quotes would work, but in JSON format, the standard is you must use double quotes. So simply here, let's say double quotes will do last name. At the end of that line, the spaces at this point are optional, but I'll do space colon. And then quotes here, Parker. I'm defining the object of a superhero. One of the properties of that object is a last name. And the syntax is like this, name, colon, value. Comma, at the end of that line, I'm still defining the same object, so not a semicolon here. I'm not, defi I'm not finished defining the object, so a comma. That superhero has a first name. The first name is Peter. End of the line there, comma. That is the uh, hero name, colon, Spider-Man. Just gave away his identity. But last name, first name, hero name, all of these three are bound together with those curly brackets, and all of that data is stored as this variable. Um, the semicolon would, would be there at the end of the curly brace, that statement, var, var, whatever, equals whatever, end of statement. So that's where the curly brace would go, not at the end of these lines, and no final comma there comma between each element until the final element, so no final uh, comma. Another thing to make note of, of Jason is there, 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 there should not be, unfortunately, any comments in the object. So if I wanted to add, you know, a double line comment here to explain what that is, that would actually invalidate my JSON object. So we should not have any comments inside of the actual JSON object. If I wanted to write any comments, I'd write it up here. So up here, um, object of superhero with three uh, properties, aka keys, aka va uh, names, and three values must not use JavaScript comments in the JSON object. If you think one, one uh, step outside the box, you could make, don't do this, but you could make a, 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 a key here called comment and then write your comment right there. That then would be permissible by the standard. Uh, again, I'm not going to do this, but no comments uh, as we've been used to with the double slash or the slash asterisk.
Okay, so if we go outside of the definition of that object, console.log superhero. Let's open this up in the web browser, open up the console, and see what the console tells us we have. Mind your spelling, of course, superhero. If I run it in, um, if I run it in Firefox, open up my console, Chrome, Firefox, whatever. Uh, I'm seeing in my console there. Okay, you've got an object. Last name, first name, hero name. Uh, to see it's slightly different in Firefox, um, if you click on the console and you click on the object, it will just show you the data in a slightly different way, alphabetically here. Over on Chrome, let's see, you get something similar. I'll open it in Chrome, open my console. Chrome shows it a little different. It says there's an object that's been put into the console. I open that up, it says the same thing. There's your key value pairs and some other deep level stuff. So we've created an object, we've displayed it in the console. Did that work for everyone? Anyone need a little help? Okay, this console log output is outputting the whole object. Well, we have these various sort of fields in this object, last name. If you wanted to only display the last name field, but we shouldn't quite use that syntax or that terminology field, um, we would do dot last name the property of that object. Display to me in the console this object specifically that property. So if you save that and run it, it should then show Parker in the console output. I'm saying show me what's in the field last name of the object superhero. Save and run that. My output is just Parker. I've said, show me one property of that object. Okay, that doesn't seem complex at all, and it doesn't quite seem like a database. Okay, here's how we can make it more complex and interesting. As I said, the um, if you've been used to using other types of databases, relational databases, this set of data relates to this set of data. This is not re really relational, in, except that all of this data is this object. Well, if I want to get more complex, Let's say I want to list here, I've got the superhero, this character, and this character has a certain set of superpowers. So I want to store into this object a list of superpowers, the names of the superpowers, and a description of those superpowers. So we'll do it like this. We have a brand new key value pair, so comma, don't forget that comma there at the end, because we've got a brand new pair the name of this field, so to speak, will be superpower, or superpowers, or whatever we want to, however we want to define the schema, commas, I mean colon right here. This time, putting square brackets. This time I'm putting an array in the in the in the value section and an array is a list of data isn't it well the um, the data that I'm going to be storing here 
is um, going to be either uh, it's going to be the name of the power as well as the uh, the description. It's going to be another object. So I'm putting in um, an object here uh, to display more data. This is going to get again more detail. So I'm going to break this over like this. Square brackets. If it's an array, I'm going to say I'm going to describe several pieces of data to this one field. And several pieces of data is going to be in JSON format because they will have a key and a value pair. So, I'll say here in quotes, uh, power, just to think also in terms of like, uh, um, an array, I'm going to start with zero, the zeroth number, right? In an array, we start counting from zero, one, two, so power zero, colon, um, one of his powers is Spidey Sense. Comma, we'll put one more power. Zero one. The second power. He has a uh, wall crawling. Before we go further. Well, let's see how we would display this in the console because now we've got. Um, now we've got more data in a deeper sort of level. I'm going to change my line 25 to say uh, hero name. And then the next line, console log superhero dot superpower. But we're dealing now with an array. So we're going to retrieve a particular index of the array. We've put an array in that field. So we're going to say which position of the array are we pulling data from. We've got one array in that field, so it's the zero with position. In the zero with position dot power zero zero. Oops. So from this object, from this field, the zero with position of the array, give me what's stored inside of power zero. Go ahead and save and run that. And uh, if you save it and run it, the output should then say on one line, Spider-Man, and on the second line, Spidey Sense. Because we're retrieving from our database the this particular field data. If we want to pick that. Okay, so I said we're going to store a list of superpowers and a description of what those powers are. So um, these square brackets, so uh, let me write this here. Uh, you don't have to write this. If I was writing, you know, thing array. I would have 1 and uh, 99 and uh, 123 and so forth. We, we've seen this um, before. So if I wanted to say uh, number 123 from that array is a certain index position, what index number is that? 2. Because we've got 0, 1, 2. So I would say thing brackets 2 will equal 123. 
not square brackets right here. So this is like superpower square brackets, and in the first position is all of this data. The second position will be the descriptions of these powers. The second position. So in um, uh, in this array, I'm going to add a second position of data. So I'm going to back into before the before the array ends right there, comma curly braces like I had here. Curly braces holds this data, comma curly braces can hold this data, comma because I'm storing superpower names, superpower descriptions, and maybe some other bit of data, superpower level. How strong is the level or something? So um, for readability, um, I'm going to break this over like this, something like that. So we've got the opening and the closing of that JSON object. JSON is keys and values. So then in here, I will do description 00, zero and then describe that, description 01, and describe that one. And the data is related to each other because it's all part of the same main field right there. So I'm going to tab in there and say desk, I'll just keep it short, desk 00, zero colon, description of spider sense is uh, Precognitive ability to sense danger. So I'm going to write here a whole sentence. Ability to sense danger. At the end of that line, comma, because then I've got the second desk zero 01. Description of wall crawling uh, can stick to just about any <coughs> surface. So I'm saving this data. I want to retrieve it. See if you, before I write it, see if you can retrieve the first description in your console here, based on what we learned so far here. So we've done displaying the hero name, displaying the first power. Now see if you can then display the first description. So to retrieve that would be, I'm going to position one, um, index number one, position two of my array. I started the array, that's the first position, comma, that's the second, so it's one, the index one, the second position. In the second position, I have names of desk. So then I chose desk one, a desk zero, which correlates to power zero. And that should display in the console. there, the sentence that we wrote in the description field. Yes? Uh, if it's an array, and it's like uh, two records, two array wide, we don't have the, full, the second, the first index, the same name, it's like power zero, zero, power zero, one. We could definitely do that. I'll show you right now. We could do that, perhaps to make it make more sense in our minds. Yeah, we could do that. It is valid because it's a separate entity. So it still works. I'm refreshing. So we could do we could do that. Um, the thing is that this JSON is very open-ended. We can define our schema however we want. So 
thinking the way you thought about it there, that would make perfect sense. You could do it. I was doing it in this way just to show, you know, this is all bundled together. This group of data is power. This group of data is description. But yes, this would work just fine as well. The big difference, of course, then is that we're in sort of like different branches of the data, and they're separated with the index values. So uh, here, then, uh, I've been saving data to the array and retrieving it. I've been doing it as I created the object. I created the object up here of superhero, and then added the data at that moment. This, of course, is changeable data. We just need to use the syntax to, to change it. Let's say um, I wanted to uh, change the data of um, hero name, as an example. Um, let's say Peter Parker became a different character. So we would change hero name. Uh, next line, a couple spaces there. Uh, and that would simply be the object itself in the assignment operator. So we've got superhero dot hero name equals string. Um, for a time, he was also known as the Scarlet Spider. I'm not sure if I've mentioned it in this class. I often do in my other classes. One of my hobbies is reading and collecting comic books. So I know a little bit about this stuff. Here then, next line, console. Show that in the console. Show the result. Console.log. Um, copy and paste there. The hero name. Here I've assigned a new value to that name of that object, and here I'm just showing it. So first we will see the original name, and then we'll see the updated name. So if I run that, The data that's output is the data that was there originally. Then we've got the line where we re, re, where we edit one of the fields, and I put in the new one, and then it output for the new hero name. The data has been changed. Well, that's changing existing fields. That's a, that's changing existing name and value pairs. What if I wanted to add a brand new third? power. I've, dis I've given a power 1 and power 2. I want to add a power 3. So based on what we have so far, we, we have that knowledge. We just have to take one step forward. Up here, I'm saying, show me power 0. And over here, I'm saying, assign something to an existing name. Well, we can do uh, power zero two by simply referencing it and then it's created and added to the data. So uh, next line here, superhero dot superpower zero because we're dealing with the block of data in the um, in the um, in, in the name of the power section. And then dot power zero two, and we're assigning to it let's see, a third power um, super strength. And therefore, to see it output, console log. And I'll copy and paste that whole chunk right there.
So when I first defined the object, the schema, when I first defined how is this data going to be saved, I did not have a power 0, 2. On the fly, I created a new field, just referenced it, and it got created, and then I can output it. Now, uh, since it's in a plain, since all of this data is in a plain old var, it's temporary as long as the browser, as long as the project is running. If I were to exit and reload it, and these, then I deleted these lines here, then the data would not have been saved. It's a var, it's temporary. Using other things like local storage and later when we talk about PouchDB, we can make this permanent data. Right now it's, it's temporary. It's, it's running in memory. I close the browser, I lose all of this data. But PouchDB will solve that and we could we could use local storage as well to uh, to get halfway there to, to data permanence. PouchDB then we will see when we get further to that. PouchDB is gonna save its data into your web browser like a cookie. It's gonna be permanent. It can be deleted and such. You can turn on and off the computer or the device and the data will still be there in PouchDB. But it's gonna be only on that device. PouchDB is cool, however, because then that data can be replicated to a server. So if I do have a server, I can then replicate the local data off to the cloud and then have that transferred to other devices and such. But that's getting ahead of ourselves for the moment. Um, this is this is the concept of what JSON is. It's just a way to define our data, the structure of our data. Let's say Let's say I wanted to include a picture of the character in the data, in the database. I would need a new field, a new name and value pair. At the end of the square bracket, or the, at the end of the array, let's add a comma right there, because now we're adding more data to this object. We had last name, comma, first name, comma, etc., superpower, blah, 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 comma. So then we've got another field right here. Uh, we'll call this uh, image, colon. So you see the syntax prevails still there. In quotes, double quotes, we've got what kind of data it is. And then over here, I can simply have a string reference to an image. So very simply, what I could do here in quotes is, you know, uh, this then is a valid path. I could have here, just as an example, we'll, we'll do this properly in a moment, we could say uh, images.com slash spiderman.jpg. That's not a real location. But if there's a picture on a server, that's a path to that picture on a server. I didn't actually save the raw data of the picture in the database, even in a real database like MySQL or uh, Oracle and such. You're not really saving the raw data in the database. It's too much data. You're saving the data on the server and then in the database a reference to the picture somewhere in the file structure. So there it is. There's an image saved to my database. Now, it's not an image that really exists but then that would be an image I can retrieve if I want it to be more complex this could be then an array because I want to display this is going to be the picture uh, the head shot of the character and then another one the full body shot of the character so it's two bits of data tied to one key image so an array works here curly braces again Break those over. And I'll say uh, uh, head photo. We'll just say um, we had um, uh, 
slash images slash um, Spider-Man slash head. Let's say SM head. Obviously, this is a completely fake graphic that doesn't exist, but you should get the, the idea here. Comma, because then we've got body photo. And then that would be the path in images folder. Spider-Man slash SM body dot ping. Oh, uh, where did the sign-in sheet end up? So here then are uh, references over to images, if, if they existed. Um, then we could easily write HTML to display the image on screen. So we've got all of this data um, that we're saving to the database. We're going to take a break and then um, we've been displaying it in the console. We can display it over in the uh, on screen. So uh, we'll do that after the break. Uh, it's 7.20. Let's take a break until 7.30, and then we'll further work with this.